I have a couple images here that I want to edit real fast. Uh, I want to make them into what I, what are called multi-layered uh, stencils, basically. Uh, this is going to be a diff another way of creating a mirror balance project or making at least one half of the mirror balance project. The mirror balance project basically is a simple stencil. With, with editing these two images here, what I'm going to do is um, add a few more values to it. Uh, you can actually add a couple more color tones as well if you wanted. Uh, and if you add more layers, I'm going to do a simple uh, two-layer image on both of these. But, uh, I mean, using Photoshop, you're able to, you know, basically create whatever you want uh, within reason. But, uh, so here I have an image here that I have found online. Uh, it's from a professional photographer. And I thought it was a very dynamic image. And I thought it'd be cool to translate into this into a stencil. So what I want to do now is I want to convert this into a black and white stencil image. So what I want to do first is see what the image size is. And so I'm going to go up to image, image size. And right now it's about 4 by 5 at 200. That should be decent, adequate for printing out, uh, you know, smaller than tabloid size. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this image. I can either, of course, remember to right click on it or just pull it down and click on the little half square there and you're going to duplicate the image. You can rename them if you want. Top, bottom. Okay, and now what we need to do is I'm going to add one more empty layer. I'm going to click on that and add an empty layer. I'm going to put it on the very background. So we'll call this background. Okay, and right now I'm going to leave it blank. Uh, when you see the, you know, checkerboard, or what some people refer to as tabletop, uh, picnic tabletop, uh, that's basically mean there's that's an empty cell. Let me hide these images here, and see the top layer, hide that. The little eyeball there, of course, hides. Uh, let me bring them back up just to show you a quick little trick. If you hit the Option or the Alt key, uh, Alt on Mac, uh, excuse me, Alt on PC, uh, Option on Mac and then hold down the option button and click on an eyeball, uh, the other layers will all disappear. Even if you had 50 layers there, it'll make them all disappear except that one. It's an easy way if you lose a layer, you can't figure out where a certain item is, you can always find it by just clicking through those until you get the right one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply, apply a threshold to it. There's different ways of doing this. You could have uh, dropped the color first, a great way to drop color. Uh, in a uh, RGB file is to go to the channel mixer and select monochrome and then this way you have options to adjust you know the values in there you can adjust how strong the reds are uh, how strong the greens are give it a little more white and the blue as well and then you could go to threshold and apply it and sometimes you get a little better image. Sometimes what's good to do before you go to threshold is to go to the levels and the levels basically adjust the white and black points and so you can basically grab this side and pull in a bit and that's going to strengthen the black side or the black tones and if you pull the, the white button over it's going to you know, change the white point on that. You can see that it's going to burn it out if you bring it in a little bit more. And so um, that's another option you have. That's great for photographs if you're trying to find true black and true white. But uh, for this image, we don't have to, you know, it's going to be a stencil. So concerning ourselves with that much detail is probably uh, not necessary. So what, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and go to threshold, image adjustments, threshold, and apply threshold to it. Uh, usually for the first one, you want it to be about 120. Let's go ahead and put it on 120. It's going to be multiple layers, and so uh, what we want is this image to be, when we move that threshold slider from side to side, um, it's pushing the blacks and whites from side to side as well. As you can see there, you know, I can crank it all the way to one side, or I can crank it back to the other side. You can see how, you know, the white overpowers or the black. But uh, here, let's leave it on about 120. I think that's probably good for the first top layer. And then for the bottom, uh, I didn't need to double click that, but uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and apply another threshold. I'm not going to drop the color first, I'm just going to apply the threshold to it. And on this, let's push it to, uh, let's say about 160, somewhere right in there. Uh, if you wanted to actually phys physically type it in, of course, double click the highlight, 160, and enter. And we have our two there. Um, and then the next step, what you want to do 
is let's click on here let's go ahead and select we want to get rid of the white color or the, the white value that's in here uh, and so what we need to do is select it we could use the magic wand tool but that's not going to probably select some of these areas that are you know closed and when you use the magic wand tool it's looking for uh, basically solid connected shapes and sometimes you can have you know one or two pixels that are the same color so you can you know select across a wide range but for this I can see there's some areas that the magic wand is not going to be able to grab into and so a great little tool is under select there's an option for color range and if you select color range what that does gives you this little pop out window and what you can do is you can select certain colors of course this is only black and white and so um, we're only limited to, to black and white but if you had an image that say you had a, like a, a flower that was like a yellow flower and you wanted to you know select you know a certain part of the yellow to amplify it to make it a little brighter you could you know click onto that yellow and then you know that would select it and then you could go in and use your your color tools and color correct it or whatever you need to do with this we're just going to click on the white and what it's going to do is it's going to go through and find everything that's similar to what we clicked onto, and we'll see it right here. You can see the, uh, you know, the selection, or as I call them, the dancing ants. You know, jumped around and grabbed all the white. So what we're going to do is just hit uh, delete, and that's going to delete all that out. If to check it, you can just hide the bottom layer there. And you can see that it's missing. We can see the checkerboard in the background, and that means all that white has disappeared, basically, right? And so let's bring the bottom up, and we're going to delete, do the same for the that layer as well. We're going to go up, select color range. We don't have to deselect it before we go on to the step. It's going to naturally uh, change over. So we're on the bottom layer now. We're going to click the white area there. It's going to do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and hit delete again. Okay, so now we have it all cut out. Uh, that is all the white color. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to go to the base layer. I'm going to select the bucket, the paint bucket, and I'm going to dump in. I have black and white here. I'm going to go ahead and dump in. Let me uh, first hit Control D. You could say deselect as well, Control D uh, or Command D on the Mac, and that will um, take off the dancing ants from our image. And so now what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to do is dump in the white bucket. See, I'm on this layer, so I have a white layer. And then here's my top layer. And you'll notice when I click on the bottom layer, it's going to get a little thicker. So there. Uh, so now what we want to do is go up to the images, or image adjustments, and we want to go to hue saturation. Now we want to do this for the, the, the bottom layer. And so that's why I selected bottom hue saturation and then what I want to select is colorize there that'll color that selection there or that layer and so now I have it selected and right now you're saying well I don't see anything happening let me just grab the slider and let's move it up a little bit you can see it's starting to get kind of that mauve tone well that's because this slider here is pushed all the way down we could of course pull this up we could go there's becoming more green uh, it's, the blue is becoming amplified. Uh, we're moving into some, you know, violets, and then we're gonna get, you know, almost the red yellows in there. Okay. So if you liked any of those, you could select those. I mean, if you wanted to, you know, either stencil it that way, uh, you know, print, it, uh, paint it that way, or ink it in that way as well. Uh, that is your option. Uh, what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna take the saturation and first crank it all the way up just to show you what that does. Remember saturation intensifies the color or whatever that it it's hitting there. So if it was gray, you know, to make it much brighter. Here for the saturation, we're making this blue color very intense, almost electric. Let's slide the uh, hue over just so you can see how intense the colors are now as we slide across from one side to the other. As you can see, but what I want to do is I actually want to keep it just in black uh, in ranges of gray, black, white, and ranges of gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the saturation all the way down, basically desaturating the, the, that level. And so I'm going to take it all the way down and it's becoming a gray. Okay. I'm going to push the white up or the lightness up just a little bit because I want to lighten it there. Uh, let me see. Take it down. Take it all the way up. Don't like that. Uh, it's somewhere in there. I think I like that right about there. So I'm happy with that. And so I'm going to hit OK. 
Okay, now the next thing we want to do uh, is flatten this. You could technically print these things out on separate levels, separate layers, excuse me, separate pieces of paper, and then uh, cut them out and stencil them on if you were going to do a traditional printmaking technique, like a duotone or something. But here what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image. Okay. All I did was click on that outside layer. Let's see. There it goes. Okay. Computer's taking a little long. And so then now we have a flat layer. And now what we want to do, it's a little rough on these edges here. And so what I would like to do is go to filter. And what I want to do is under artistic, there's an option for cutout. And this is going to make it look like a, you know, basically a wood block cutout or something like that or a stencil cutout. And so I'm going to have that option selected. And it will come up. I'm using uh, Adobe Photoshop CS2, and so it's nice that uh, this version actually allows you to click through the different uh, filters so you can find the one that you want to use uh, before you uh, commit. And so we can click a bunch of different ones. The, ones that I, the one that I was intending to use, of course, is cut out, uh, and we can select that. Poster edge is kind of nice there, kind of define the edge there a little bit, which is quite nice. Let me shrink this down a little bit so we can see the entirety of the image. It's a really nice image there. That's a nice image, but I'm going to use the cutout because I don't want that outside line. And so it's a little flatter, uh, better for using as a stencil. Uh, if you were going to ink it in or paint it, you know, you could always have that line there. It makes it a little more bold on the outside. But let me go back to cut out. We could, of course, adjust the number of levels, you know, the edge simplicity and, and the edge fidelity if we wanted to. Let me just show you those examples. Crank it up. Whoa, we got some modern art there. Uh, that's actually kind of interesting. Uh, let's bring, bring that back down. Let's take it down a little bit. And make it a little more simple. I think I'm going to hit the uh, one thing here. If we notice, it says cancel, OK, cancel. If you ever do something that you don't like, you could always hit cancel. But another option you have is to select the option key on the Mac or the Alt button on the PC. And you notice when you hit that, it changes cancel to reset. So watch our numbers reset which they already already were when I left them. And I, I kind of liked it like that. I'm going to leave it at 4, 4, and 2. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And that will render it real fast. OK. And now we have our image. You could always go in and maybe adjust contrast and do other things like that. But I'm kind of happy with the image the way it is right there. And so uh, I think that would be a real nice image to, to use for a mirror balance project or even to uh, use for a painting or such. Uh, I can even invert it. Let's go image adjustments, whoops, invert or control I or command I. And that creates another, you know, very dynamic image as well, you know. And so if you were going to put those together in a mirror balance project or have them, you know, staggered or running across a canvas or another piece of paper, you can do some really interesting things with that. But let's, um, let me go back out of here. I'm going to grab this next image here which is this gas mask. I found this online as well. Uh, I'm going to blow it up a little bit. You can see it's a little pixelated. Uh, that means it's probably a lower resolution image because I got it off the internet. So I'm going to go image, image size, and I'm going to see what it is. 96 uh, uh, pixels per inch or dots per inch. Uh, let's go ahead and crank that up to 200. And for the width, let's go ahead and hit that at 6. So 6 by 7 at 200. We're going to hit OK. You notice how the file size gets much lar larger there. So we'll hit OK. I'm going to shrink it back down to fit onto my screen. And OK, that's good. Let's just blow it up just a little bit more. It's still a little rough in the areas. So what we're going to do, when we increase the DPI like that, basically just adds more squares. Uh, to that, that inch, you know, that one square inch area, there's more little squares in it there to give it more, you know, information to, to look at. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead. A great way to clean up an image is go to filter and blur any image. If you have a photographic image that maybe is a little rough or not, you know, as clean as you would like it to be, uh, what I always do and what, what most uh, artists do is they go to blur. Uh, Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, click on that, and you'll see that we have an option here where we can actually slide it down and blur it out and slide it back. Usually, 
for the most part, for an image like this, I'd put it like, say, uh, down close to 1 somewhere. I'll put it on 1.1 there. Hit OK. Then after we blur it, usually what's good is to sharpen it. And basically, anytime before you print, you'd want to you know, run unsharp masks. Most people wait to the end right before they print to do that. And they usually actually save their files as, you know, before unsharp and after, or unsharped and sharped. Uh, so here, let's crank it up just to show you what happens when we sharpen this. You can see it just defines the edges a little bit. Let's shrink it down a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Let's kind of clean it up a bit. Threshold takes it down a little bit. Let's crank that back down. We can crank it all the way up just to show you what it looks like. Kind of cleans up the edge. My, this might actually work better for the threshold. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the threshold, the unsharp mask really high like that. And I'm going to hit OK. And then what I want to do is go ahead and duplicate it. I'm going to hit right click, duplicate layer. And we'll call this bottom. Whoops. If I can spell. Bottom. And we'll call the one in the background top. And then we'll just throw this one up there. OK. Remember, anytime you want to move a layer around, you can just click on it and hold down and move it whichever way you want. Um, so now we have our two layers here. And so the next step, of course, is to apply the threshold. So I'll do first uh, image adjustments and threshold. For this one, I think I'm going to crank it down really low because of the amount of black that's present in the image. Uh, I like that. That's 73. That's kind of nice. Let me see. Usually, sometimes it's going down to about 55. That's a good number. Uh, I kind of like 55. So I'm going to use that as a top. I'm going to hit OK. Now remember, you could always come in, you know, with the eraser and take out some of this uh, areas up there. Or say, if you want to use a paintbrush, it's on white right now. We could. Uh, we have a small brush right now, but we can simply hit the bracket button. And you can see how. Turn that opacity up to the full blast, and we can just paint out some of those areas that may uh, interfere with our image. And here, if you wanted to go black on there, let's quickly you know change over and let's fill it in. And so, if you wanted to fill in these areas too, even if you wanted to fill in that, that's fine. I don't know what this is. We could fill this in as well. As such. You could fill in anything you want. You could add, you could add, take away, whatever, whatever you prefer. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and back this out just a bit. Let's see. I'll take it back just a little bit. I kind of like some of that black stuff there. That kind of noise, noise makes it a little interesting. I think sometimes. Uh, let's take it down to. Right about there. I kind of like those stripes there, so I'll leave those stripes there. Okay, so we're going to go to the bottom image and apply the threshold. Remember, the bottom image is still unchanged, so now we select bottom, go image, adjustments, and we'll threshold it as well. Uh, this one, let's push it up a little bit, say to 160. Now, right now you're saying, well, I don't see anything happening. Let's go ahead and cancel. Let's go ahead and hide that top layer. Now, let's try this again adjustments threshold and there's 28 let's see what it looks like higher whoa that's a little too dark uh, let's see I'm gonna leave it there let's see what it looks like with the two on top and I'm gonna go ahead and hit color range on this one we actually we could probably do three you know and have a middle value tone a light dark and middle value tone uh, well, let's go ahead hit the color range well actually let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna go ahead let's go back to threshold so we know this image is okay I'm gonna duplicate this image real fast and we'll go up here and apply the threshold uh, as we last did which was 128 let's push it up just a little bit we'll leave 144 and then we'll pull that to the bottom and then for this image here, we'll go 124 image threshold. We'll just see what it looks like. We will test it. 128 was good, right? Okay, we'll leave it like that. Okay, so now we have our three images. I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of the white. So let's go select color range. And I'm going to click on the white area. Okay. I'm going to hit delete. 
I'm going to go to the next layer. I'm going to hit color range. And the same thing, I'm going to select the white. OK. And then hit delete. And then the very bottom, I'm going to go ahead and select color range. And select the white. OK. And hit delete. OK. And right now it doesn't look like too much, but let's go ahead and put a, uh, a fill layer in the bottom. OK. And we'll dump in pure white into this layer here. Let me hit option and whoops. Let me hit option in layer zero or layer one. So we can see the white going in. I hit option in the eyeball again. Now they all come back alive. And what we'll do is uh, let's go ahead and hit bottom and we'll do image adjustments. Uh, well, right now you can see the hue saturation is is grayed out, meaning that we can't select it. And so what we have to do, uh, or an option we have, is we need, we can change this to, see this is a grayscale image, and so what we need to change it to is an RGB image. Uh, we could change it to CMYK, but RGB, uh, most people prefer, uh, let's say don't merge, because if we merge all the layers would go together, so don't merge. And let's go image, adjustments, hue saturation, and let's go ahead and increase the lightness. Let's do there and pull the saturation down. Okay. And let's see if the bottom, if, it, if anything happens when we do that on the bottom one. Hue saturation. Let's crank this up really high. Okay, let's take the saturation down. I just didn't hue. I was just seeing if anything would change. So here we have our image. Uh, let's just let's take off the that one. That would be an option. We could take off the bottom one. That would be an option. We could come in and paint some of this in. Uh, but I think it's kind of interesting the way it is with the three tone little layers there. We could add add more if you wanted four. You know, quad tone, whatever it may be. Uh, let's let's see what this looks like inverted. So I'm gonna click down here on this half pie you can see it says create new fill or adjustment layer and well hopefully you can let's pull this up just a little bit so you can see that label hit there you can see there it says create new fill or adjustment layer this is what it says and we'll go up here and we'll hit invert and what that does is going to flip all the tones underneath it so let's hide this and see the difference so there's a kind of interesting image there uh, I think there'd be a lot to work with in this in this image. Uh, it's kind of nice. So let's go ahead and get rid of the inversion or the inverted layer. Let's go ahead and flatten this image, and so with that we can uh, apply the filter to it to kind of soften the edges a little bit. See what it looks like. Uh, we want to go to artistic, and then cut out. Let's see what this looks like here real fast. As the beach ball is spinning and we'll see as it comes up here and it's rendering it so it's almost done and there it is let's shrink it down a bit so we can see it better okay I think that looks pretty neat so let me hit OK we could actually increase let's see what 5 looks like oh that's kinda neat let's go ahead and number levels let's push that up a bit uh, I didn't see much of a change let's change, move it a little higher Let's move it lower. There's a lot of options you have there that we could work in. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 452. Uh, I'll just move the fidelity just to show you all what happens. Doesn't look like much happened there. Let's go this way. Kind of softens it. I definitely like it at 2. OK, and we'll hit OK and lock the image in. And there we go. There's a, got a lot of stuff we can work with. We could use just the, you know, black markers, you know, your sketch pens or your Prismacolor markers or the Shark Pack uh, markers or Copic markers come in with the grays and such. And that would be a really, you know, very dynamic image to use.